Hey everyone, it's Mike here from the SEO Pub, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Google Data Studio. I wanted to do this video because I think a lot of people, I know a lot of people I've talked to feel kind of intimidated in getting started with Google Data Studio. They, they know it's a great tool, but they just don't feel that they can learn how to use it. And it's actually really simple once you understand how it works. And once it clicks with you, it's really easy to work with. Almost everything is just drag and drop. It's pretty simple to figure out. So in this, this is going to be just a very basic tutorial on how to get started with Google Data Studio. Google Data Studio, of course, is a great reporting tool that lets you build reports using data from Google Analytics, Google Search Console, Google Ads. You can also use non-Google properties, like you can build reports using uh, information from your Facebook ads, Twitter ads. Uh, SEMrush has a connector to Google Data Studio. Pretty much anything that you market on probably has a connector to Google Data Studio. And even something doesn't have a connector to Google Data Studio, if you can export the data into Google Sheets, you can use Google Sheets as a data source for Google Data Studio. Google Data Studio offers really simple reporting. Um, instead of having to dig through analytics and find the data you want, you can build a dashboard that presents the data that you care about inside analytics. And I think Google Data Studio is going to be even more important as we transition to Google Analytics 4. If you've dug around into Google Analytics 4, it's a little, at least for most people I think who have who've dug around in it so far, think it's a little more difficult to find the data you want um, than Universal Analytics was. So if you build a good dashboard that you like using the data from Google Analytics 4, it'll be really easy to find uh, actionable data for yourself. What's also great about Google Data Studio is it offers reports on demand, meaning you don't have to go and run a report, you don't have to find the information you want. Once you build out a dashboard, you just log on to it and it automatically pulls the data every single time. You can have it switch dates, um, present the data however you want. It's also great if you're doing client work because you don't have to run reports for them. You just give them the link to the Data Studio dashboard and the report is there anytime they want to go look at it. So in this video, I'm going to use Google provides a sample data stream from Google Analytics and Google Search Console. I'm going to use those for this video. I'm going to pause the video, though, while I connect the data sources. Connecting data sources is really easy. If you have any questions about it, you can leave them in the comments down below. But I can't do it on video without exposing some of my clients. So I'm going to pause the video while I connect the data sources. And then we'll get into, I'm going to walk through building a basic dashboard to show you how easy it is to work with Google Data Studio. Okay, so I have my data sources connected here. When you first open up Google Data Studio, it's just going to put a basic chart here for you. We'll get back to that later. What I want to do right now, though, is I want to start building a header for the dashboard that we're going to build. So I'm going to start with a logo, and we'll build out the header then. Okay, so I'm going to go to the image. We're going to upload a logo here. And we're going to move it up into the corner. Okay, that looks pretty good. One thing you can do if you, to make things easier, you can actually use a grid. So if you go here to view grid, you can change the grid size. Um, makes it a little easier to line things up. And Google Data Studio actually helps you a lot with that. It's very similar if you've ever used Canva, where you see all these lines that will appear. So it'll show you. And when I center something, a line will go through it. I center it down, down here, a line will go through it. So it makes it really easy to get things lined up to one another. Um, again, it works a lot the same way that Canva does. Next, I'm going to add a text box because I want to give this report a title. And this one, we're going to create, uh, it's going to be versus previous period performance. What I'm going to do is this dashboard is going to allow you to select a time period, and then it will show you how your site performed in that time period compared to that same, the previous time period. So for example, if you select the last 30 days, it will show you how the site performed compared to the previous 30 days. Now, anything that you do inside here, you have styling options. So if we select this text, we can change it. Let's make it, uh, let's say, 24 point. And you can change the font, do whatever you want. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on the styling stuff because I think that's pretty intuitive and pretty easy for, for most people to figure out. I'm going to change the size of this box a little bit though. Okay. And then we wanna to try to line it up 
center it with that, and we'll put it not quite in the center of the screen. We'll put it right there. Next thing I want to do is I want to add what's called a control. And there's all kinds of different controls, but the one that I'm going to use is going to be the one I probably most commonly use is this date range control. The date range control, insert that right here, allows you to select a, just like it sounds, a date range to show data for. So, so I want it to show the last 30 days. And what I wanted to do, I have you have the option here to set it. I wanted to, as soon as you pull up the report, it's always going to have the last 30 days. So I'm going to set that. And you can change the style of it. Um, we'll come back to that in a second. Next thing I want to do is I want to add a shape. And I'm going to add a rectangle. And we're going to put it right up here. At the top of everything. And we're going to change the color of it. Make it blue. Now, obviously, it's covering everything. If you right click on it, there is an option here to change the order. I want to send this to the back. So I send it to the back. Now, that blue doesn't look very good with my logo. So, what I'm going to do, let's see. I'm going to go with that is terrible. I know we just do black. All right, now obviously with black, the other things I created, now you can't see them. So I'm gonna select that and we're gonna change this to white. And we're gonna select this box and we're gonna go to the style option. I want to change the font, so I'm gonna make it white. Uh, I want the header to be blue. I want the background blue. Now we select it. Almost there. There we go. Um, I actually want this part white. There we go. So now that's all styled. Looks nice. Okay. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to come to this chart in a second, but I want to add, there's different types of ways you can present your data. You can do it in a table like this, which we'll, we'll get into some of those. One other thing I usually do at the beginning of a dashboard I create, though, is I use a couple scorecards. This is a scorecard. Any type of data you're going to present, you need to connect it to a data source. Now, by default, the scorecard, it automatically connected to Google Analytics here. If you wanted to do something with Google Search Console or Google Ads, whatever other data sources you have, you would just change the data source. And just like inside Analytics, this works based on metrics. So you have all these different metrics you can use. So this is new users. What I want to do though first, before I do new users, I actually want to show actual users or total users. And I'm going to style this. I want the label centered. I want the metric value centered. I want the comparison centered. And I'm going to change the labels to white. And we're going to use the same blue for the fill color. There we go. Now, this doesn't have a comparison yet. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to the data here. And we want to look down here. You'll see this comparison data range. Right now, it's set to none. I want to do previous period. Now, what that does is it, it shows the last 30 days, how many users that we have compared to the previous 30 days. It's a little hard to read there, so I'll go back into the style sheet here. And these are the error, the metrics that will show. I'm going to see if I can maybe lighten that up. There we go. So now you can see so there's 4.3% more users during this time period than the previous, comparing to the previous period. Now, one thing, instead of adding new scorecards and going through all that again, you can just copy and paste. And we'll just line these up here. I'm going to do a couple of these. And you can see those blue lines that show up. So it shows that I'm spacing these equally apart at the bottom there, which is nice. So this one, I am going to do new users. So we did total users first, then let's do new users. There we go. And any metric that you can think of inside of Google Analytics is here. So if we wanted to do page views, you can do that. Right here, you'll find page views. 
We could also do, um, I usually like to do uh, convert whatever the primary conversion is that we're concerned with. And that will show up under your, your goals. Um, if it's an e-commerce site, you can also look at things and you have AdWords and things running. You can also look at things like cost per conversion. But instead of conversion, I'm gonna look at goals. And this, the sample data, sample analytics account that I connected to, Google has a ton of goals in it. I don't know what half of them are. Obviously, if it was your own account, you would know what, what each of the goals are. But I'm just gonna pick one. Um, we'll just go back up to the beginning and let's say that this was our primary goal we wanted to focus on. And you notice it's engaged users and it, it kind of drags off, goes off the edge of this. You could resize the box. Or what you can do, if you come over here into the metric and this little button will change to a pencil, you can edit it. So I could change this to uh, conversions. And now it will be the title of it will be conversions. Again, here, these are a little hard, these uh, values, the change value is a little hard to read. So we can swap that out with a different color. That's a little too light. There we go, we'll go darker, and that's a little easier to read. Um, here, we'll put my least favorite metric in here. Bounce rate. And we could do, um, Everybody loves to focus on their page speed, right? So we'll do average load page load time in seconds. Average page load time. Fits. Okay, so we have these little scorecards. So scorecards I like to use for things that are metrics that you look at site-wide at a glance and just kind of give you a quick overview of how the site's doing. Nothing, nothing too crazy in there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a chart. Oh, and also I would probably label these. So we'll put some text up here. Um, we'll call this at a glance because this is what I would look at just as a, at a glance to see how the site's doing. Line that up there. There we go. And I'm going to get rid of the, the grid as I'm going here. The grid makes it really easy to line things up and, and all that, but just yeah, I think it looks a little nicer on video without that. For this, again, I'm just going to copy and paste. Grab the wrong one. And we're gonna do uh, channel performance for this chart. So this chart, again, if you look at the data over here, it's connected to Google Analytics. And just like the reports that you look at inside of analytics, I'm gonna drag this across here. Everything in, inside here is drag and drop. Like it's, it's really simple to manipulate. Even the size of these columns, you can change just by by dragging these lines around. But everything that's inside analytics, as far as it works the same way in Data Studio, where everything is run by dimensions and then metrics of those dimensions. So what I mean by that is, let's change this dimension to default channel grouping. And you're probably familiar with seeing this. You get the direct paid search, display, affiliates. Uh, normally you'd see like organic search in there. Um, it's not showing up in the sample data, but normally that would be in there. And now we select metrics. So we, we see the channel grouping, and then we can look at different metrics with those. So we have new users. Um, we'll also do users. And just scroll down, add the users. Now I want the total users to show first. So I just drag and drop that. Uh, let's say we want the conversions again. We want to see where conversions are coming from. So I would look for that same goal and I think it's 
this one that I selected. I'm going to change that to conversions. And again, you just can drag these around, like whatever size you want. So any metrics that you want to look at, um, if you want to look at how many sessions happened, add that. Whatever, whatever you want to see here, you can put into the chart. One other thing you can do, actually, let's go over to the style first and get rid of, I, I don't like these numbers in the charts that show up by default, so we're going to get rid of those. Um, let's change the table colors to match everything else. There we go. And you could play, I'm not going to do it in this video, but you could play around font sizes and all that kind of stuff for different fonts, whatever, whatever you want to do there. Going back to the data though. So this, you can select how many rows will show. Now this is a small chart, but the next one we're going to do is going to be a little bigger and you'll see where you may want to have more showing. Um, you can select any of these. So we'll just put it at 10 and I'm going to actually shrink this because we don't need it. You can also set the sort, uh, the default sort setting. So when you load this, it's going to, right now it's set for new users. So it's going to sort by descending. So it's going to start with the most and drop down. It's going to show new users. We could change that if we wanted to, to if we wanted it to sort by users. We could change that and now it's sorting by users. When you view the chart though, you can switch. If we hit the view button up here, you can sort by any of these. This is just selecting which one at the beginning when you first open the report shows uh, how it's how it's sorting the data. Let's go back in here. And one other thing you can do in here is if you scroll down, you have this comparison data. Right now it's set to none, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it to previous period. Hit apply. And what it's gonna do now, let me fix this a little bit. So I, I play around and I would line those up a lot better than what they're showing there. But uh, what it's doing now is we have the last 30 days selected. If we would change this to the last, let's say the last seven days, it's going to pull all the data for the last seven days. And then it's doing comparison to how the site did the previous seven days. And it shows the change there. One thing that Data Studio does not let you do, it doesn't have anything to relabel these at the top. So it just does this, the delta symbol for the percent change. Um, you can change it to raw numbers instead of percentages, but it doesn't let you change the label on there, unfortunately. So you're, you're kind of stuck with that. Uh, we can also make this look a little better where I want the, the dimension I'm fine with, but the metrics, I want all of these centered. So each metric that we've added has its own styling. And yeah, so you can set, um, so you can change it to the absolute number, like I said here, instead of the percentage, if you want, whichever you prefer. And there, so we have it styled and looks pretty recent. Now, let's say that you did this as a table, the drop down up here, and you didn't want it as a table, you could change it to one of these other options. Like, let's say I wanted a table with heat map instead. I can select that. And inside the styling option now, I can I can recolor this. But what it does is it creates a heat map where the highest number is the darkest color, and drifts all down from there for each of these. Um, <clears throat> you could change it to any of these other. Some of these won't necessarily work. You know, the best like a pie chart is not going to work great with this data. Um, but we'll go back to just make a chart. So that's really simple how you can create a chart inside of Data Studio for reporting. And again, you have. If you look at the dimensions here or the metrics, you can just scroll down. Everything that you'll find inside analytics is there. So you have a ton of options in here. And same thing with the metrics. So whatever you want to see, um, cost per conversion, anything that you're tracking in there inside analytics, specific events, you can pull all of those up there. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to take a look at the search uh, console data. We're going to do 
search performance by query. And we're going to insert another table. Now you see at the bottom, I am running out of page space. I'm at the bottom of the page. Up, you're not limited to this page size. You can make the pages basically as big as you want. So if you go to current page settings, go to style. So we have uh, 900 pixels height right now. Let's just make that 2400. Now we have a ton of room to work with. Just be careful of the bigger you make your pages and the more data you put into them. It, it'll sometimes slow down your browser a little bit when you're looking at the, the final reports. So just don't go too crazy with that, but you can you can certainly play around with the page size. Okay, so what we wanna do here, now by default, it connected to Google Analytics. We actually want Google Search Console. And we wanna look at query data. The metrics, we're gonna look at clicks and we're also going to look at impressions. Again, I want to get rid of those row numbers. And now we can see, and remember I said before, like some of these charts are going to have a lot more data that says 11,220 queries. So the chart will show up to 100 search queries per page. We can enlarge that and you can scroll down. We get the end of the page. Oops. We get the end of the page. You hit the arrow, go to the next page, and, and keep going on from there as much data as you want to look at. This is sorting by clicks. You can change that if you want. Um, you can also resize these. And if we wanted to center them, again, just come in here, look at the metrics, center, center, done. Now, let's say we wanted this to match up here the style of this one you can copy and then if you right click on this go to the paste special and you paste the style only and that paste all your styling into it so if you create multiple charts you don't have to keep styling them over and over again you can just copy the style into the next chart now if we wanted to do the same thing but look at how this gives you the query performance from search console what if we wanted to see what pages are performing the best? Well, what we're going to do is copy this and paste. And we're just going to drag it down here. And we'll pulse it right there. And this we're going to change now the data source from Search Console site to the Search Console URL data. And now what we want to see is landing page, URL clicks, and then impression shows up. Now what this is going to show us is the data by, by page. So you can see which of your pages are performing best or worse in search results. And you can do the same thing that we did in the analytics chart above. We can change this to include the change data with the previous period, hit apply. And now it's looking at, okay, this page got this many clicks. The last seven days, the previous seven days though, it, it had gotten 12.3% more. So it dropped on there. And you can take a look at that. We could add that also to this chart up here if we wanted to. One other feature that you can use on these tables I'm going to shrink this just so I have more room. Let's copy this. So let's say that you have a, let's say that you want to track uh, some brand searches or you have specific keywords that are really important to your campaign that you just, you want them separate. Well, we're going to go back into the site data and set up query again. We have clicks and impressions. And what we're going to do is instead of looking at everything here, if you scroll down in the data tab, you can add a filter. So let's say this uh, YouTube store was the name of our brand. 
we're going to set up a filter to include query equal to YouTube store. Now, let's say you have more than one of these terms that you want to track. You hit the or button. We're going to do another query equal to uh, Google. And you could go on and on. You know, if you have a list of like 10 queries that are really important to your campaign, you can create a table just for them. Or if you have certain brand terms, I do this a lot for brand terms that we want to track how the brand is doing in search results. We'll do this. And then it brings up just those queries that you're filtering for. So Google Data Studio is not just about tables. If you go to the insert option, there are pie charts, bubble maps, uh, Geo chart, score. We did the scorecards, uh, all kinds of tables and combo charts, column charts, time series charts, anything, all kinds of different reporting options that you have here. Example, let's insert a geo chart and let's hook this up to analytics. And what this will show, if we get the right metric, we'll, uh, we, let's say we want to see where our new users are coming from. So it'll show what countries, it does it as like a heat map, what countries are, are uh, the most users are coming from to your site. And you can hover over countries and it will give you data based on which one you're hovering over. Also over here has this option, you can click drill down. And now you can see right here down now, I can see which cities are bringing the, the most traffic and you can play around with all kinds of different dimension, geo dimensions in here. Uh, another option, let's insert a, let's do a pie chart. And we're going to use Google Analytics. Let's say though, uh, what, what I find that like the pie charts and bar graphs and those things, they work best usually for demographic information. So let's say we wanted to see a gender breakdown on our site. Pie chart works pretty well for that. If you don't like the pie chart, you can switch it. Again, you can click up here and let's use a donut chart instead. And that will show the gender breakdown. I'm going to shrink this just to get it out of the way. Let's say that we want to see um, what devices people are coming to the site with. So for that, we're going to do a column chart. And I'm not lining any of this stuff up the, the way I normally would, but um over here the dimension we want is device category and now we have a nice and now we have a nice bar chart showing us where our users what devices our users are using so that's a really simple just walkthrough of how google to data studio works anything you have these reporting options in really simple terms you have these reporting options you connect them to a data source, and then you decide what dimensions and potentially what, what metrics you want to display in the reporting. It, it's really that simple. If you work with Google Analytics a lot, it's the same data that's in there. It's just a different way of reporting. And you can create some, I didn't play around with the styling a whole lot, but you can create some really nice looking reports and some different ways of presenting the data that Google gives you inside of Analytics and Search Console. And again, it's not limited to just them. You can connect this to Facebook ads, uh, SEMrush has a connector, um, Twitter ads, pretty much anything out there that you're marketing on probably has a connector to Google Data Studio. One other thing I wanna show you, so we did this, uh, these comparisons versus the previous time period. What if you also wanted to have the option to look at the date range versus the previous year? Sometimes you wanna look at year over year performance. So what you would do is you would take this page, we're gonna add a page, and the first page wasn't titled yet, so let's, let's title it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate it. And this extra page I created, I can just get rid of that. And we're gonna make this year over year. performance. Okay, so we're going to change the title. And nice thing about this is we don't have to recreate everything. All we need to do is you can drag and select all these scorecards, go to the data tab, 
and it's set to previous period for comparison range, we're going to click on that and select previous year instead. Hit apply. It updates everything and now it's doing comparison year over year. You can do the same thing on these charts. Now you can't drag and select everything because these text headers get in the way, but you can select multiple charts at once. So if I wanted to select those charts, and again, comparison date range, change it to previous year, hit apply. Now it's comparing year over year data. And if you go to the view, so you have these two pages that are basically the same, except the one is comparing versus the previous time period, and the other is comparing year over year. Now this won't this selector here won't carry over. So if we select the last 30 days, um, let's say we change this to the last seven days. Hit apply. If we go to the second page, it's still set on the last 30. So you'd have to select the date range again if you wanted to do the same comparison on there. So that's a really simple getting started tutorial with Google Data Studio. The one thing I recommend if you do want to start using Google Data Studio is just get in there and play around with it. Just break stuff mess around with things, play with the different charts, play with the different data sources, play with the different metrics and dimensions, just mess around with it. It's the easiest way to learn it. One other thing to let you know is if you see a data studio dashboard that you like, or there's, let's say there's just a part of it that you like, you can actually copy that over into your dashboard as long as it's shared publicly. So let's say that I wanted to copy this. You just select it, copy, and then if I go over into mine, let me get rid of this stuff. You hit paste, it pastes everything in there. Now, in that case, you would have to change your data connectors. So you'd have to make sure that you're connecting to your analytics account or search console, whatever it's connecting to. You just have to change that and everything should just work from there. So if you find something that you like, you don't have to necessarily build it from scratch. You can copy it over into your dashboard and then you can style it the way you want. You can change the colors, change the fonts, do whatever you want with it from there. So again, Data Studio, it's really not that complicated. It's all about just selecting your presentation method, I guess is what I'll call it, the chart, uh, tables, whatever you want connecting to a data source and then pulling the dimensions and metrics that you want to display there. So really that's all there is to working with Google Data Studio. If you have any questions, this was a really basic tutorial. Um, there are more complex things you can do with it, but I wanted to keep this really simple. I think anybody can get in there and build dashboards like this. It's not that hard. Once you get started, it, it starts to become a little more natural and you play around with it more and more. You get more and more comfortable with it. If you do have any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments. Be happy to help you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you go to the seopub.com, sign up for the email list there so that you get tips and ideas and strategies like this emailed to you every single Thursday. And that's it for this video. I'll see everyone in the next one.